everybody. How y'all doing? Welcome to Frico Talks the News. Guess who I am? Y'all know who I am. I am Frico. Ladies and gentlemen, we are 11. That's right. 11 shows in a row without a freak out, ladies and gentlemen. And I got to tell you, today's show, I don't know. Offhand, I'm thinking, now I might not remember something right. But I think that this is going to be an easy show for me to get through. I sure hope I haven't set myself up. But I feel like I'm going to get through the show today. I'm going to make it to number 12. And if I do, if I make it to 12 shows in a row, that means I'm only nine shows away from another world record. I will have tied my own world record. And then from there on out, then we're back in world records. Remember those times, those heady times when... After we passed the initial world record of four shows in a row, that from shows five through through 21, that every show was a world record breaker. Well, we're going to get back into that world again, ladies and gentlemen, with your help. With your help. Send in the good vibe, bitch, and we can all get through this together. But before we begin, ladies and gentlemen, I think it's, uh, I think it's personally, I think it's pretty significantly important for us to prepare ourselves we're going to have uh, some harsh words some harsh uh, tones and and histrionics and dramatics and there may be even some errors in judgment there may be some well there well we'll see what happens but for all of that and for so much more because of how much i love each and every one of you i give you this Warning, I'm going to tell you about the ability to respond to the mind's ability to measure sort of limited in our capacity to understand the actual reality of power around them, just as you and everyone else in life are young. What you're about to hear are opinions, suppositions, like gospel, or scientific proofs, not infallible certainties. Brace yourself for incoming opinions that could confirm or deny your preferential view of the reality of power. Brace yourself for fallible material, fallible opinions, and values reflected, but nonetheless variably firm and real. We do not apologize to anyone in our We do not apologize for daring to express our views and impressions of what we believe is and what we hope to see. We will keep talking so long as we are able. And now, Frico attempts to talk about the news without freaking out. That's the plan, ladies and gentlemen. And that's what we're up against. <clears throat> that's what we're trying to do. That's what all of this is about, really, at the end of the day. Which then is intended to unfold many myriads of uh, unfoldings. So, while it may be the, I guess you could say, the core mission, the all of the ancillaries are, are actually more important than the core mission. It's just that the core mission enables the ancillaries. You see what I'm saying? You see what I'm saying? You don't. I know. I'm, I'm looking at you in the back there. I know who you are. Listen. Listen. You're married to me. Why Why are you finding this hard to understand? Probably real too much there. All right. <coughs> this is Frico Talks the News for. Well, it's Friday, May 22nd, 2020. Friday. Friday. Getting down on Friday. Everybody's working for the weekend, weekend. Well, it is Friday. And actually, I, I, I really do. Friday is like a Friday, even though even though I'm making no money off of this and I have an audience of three. It's fun, been fun. It's been great uh, fun for me to do. <laughs> but uh, still a lot of work. And uh, I do appreciate when it gets to Friday. I'm like, okay, I can rest for a while. I can stop looking at things for a little bit. Although I never stop looking well. I can stop writing. That's the biggest thing. I definitely don't have as much writing, I guess, stuff in me as I used to for, for a period of a week. So... So I'm happy when I get to Friday. I'm like, okay, I can rest. And then sometimes, well, never mind. You don't need to hear about my weekends when I'm supposed to be taking a break and I end up writing some voluminous crap that I wasn't supposed to be working on. But that's beside the point. I love when those things happen, so I'm not going to complain. <clears throat> but what do we have looking for us today? For Frico Talks and News Friday, May 22nd, 2020. We have multiplying frequencies with cadmium arsenides, accelerating the development of optimal materials using Mendelavian search. Conceal carry gun AI tracking machines converge on future Canada, rearranging 15 trillion atomic poeticals. Vaccine nationalism in you. And here's a new thing I might be doing here. I swear. Here, I'm just going to, I'm going to just read you. I just want to, these are some of the tags 
that reference some of the stories just just to kind of tweak your interest a little bit more we got Helmholtz Zentrum Z Dresden Rosendorf we have Z Wang we have Derek based compounds Mendelevian search algorithm Artem R Oganov Zahed Aliyev uh, Alayurai 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 that looks like an Alayurai right Zahed Alayurai First Responder Technologies, Advanced AI Open Carry Weapons Detection. Everybody should have been booing when you heard that, by the way. Jia Kong, Institute of Botanic Sciences, Vaccine Nationalism, Donald Trump, U.S. Nationalism, Vaccine. And as usual, get the uh, Frico Talks Daily delivered to your email at frico.com daily. Let's get ready for the, the first segment. Switch it up, ladies and gentlemen. All right, so we're going to begin recording in three, two, one. These are the talk headlines for Frico Talks the News on Friday, May 22nd, 2020. My name is Frico with Frico.com. Our top headline multiplying frequencies with cadmium arsenides. And this is an excerpt from SciTechDaily.com. New material acts as efficient frequency multiplier may lead to faster data transfer and more powerful processors. And before we get to the story, I just want to remind everybody to get on over to Freako.com and check out all the latest there. And you can Sign up for email daily alerts, and you can find little buttons to send Frico money, all kinds of toys. Just go to Frico.com. Higher frequencies means data, faster data transfer, and more powerful processors. This is still in the excerpt from SciTech Daily here. All right. The formula that has been driving the IT industry for years. That's, that's, that's the key. Higher frequency means faster data transfer and more powerful processors so everybody's looking for the mecca of the meccas of where does that go <coughs> where's our plateau is there a plateau well there are plateaus technically however it is anything but easy to keep increasing clock rates and radio frequencies new materials could solve the problem experiments at Helmholtz Zentrum Dresden Rosendorf have now produced a promising result. An international team of researchers was able to get a novel material to increase the frequency of a terahertz radiation flash by a factor of seven, a first step for potential IT applications, as the group reports in the journal Nature Communications. Hope you're writing all this down. The experts used a special process to produce ultra-thin, high-purity platelets from cadmium arsenide. See? Cadmium arsenide. Cadmium arsenide. Wait, never mind. You don't see. That wasn't one of the... That is one of the tags that I chose for the story, but I, I... Never mind. I thought I was on the top there, but it wasn't. Which they then can be subject... Which they then subjected to a terahertz pulses from the... I hope that I didn't already repeat the long version of this, and if I did, forgive me for this. From the Telby facility. <laughs> if you watch the show regularly, you know what I'm talking about. Detectors behind the back of the platelet recorded how the cadmium arsenide reacted to the radiation pulses. The result, we were able to show that cadmium arsenide acts as a highly effective frequency multiplier and does not lose its efficiency, not even under the very strong terahertz pulses that can be generated at Telby reports former Isdor researcher Zi Wang, who now works at the University of Cologne. Oh, Zi Wang. Should have went with a southern accent. Darn. Next time. The experiment was the first ever to demonstrate the phenomenon of terahertz frequency multiplication up to the seventh harmonic, which apparently means something. I'm going to trust that this is pretty incredibly awesome. Let's just say yes. Comment down below if that's true. The, pump, the phenomenon holds promise for numerous future applications. For example, in, in wireless communications, 
some of these changes, some of these mount, some of these mangles that I produce, <clears throat> and I've seen others too. I really think some of them should probably be be preferred. Like people say, like library, library. What do you? What would you rather say? Be honest. What sounds better? What feels better? Library. Library feels totally better. Library is the right word, and it's because of our of our puritanical constructs that we don't allow library to take the p predominance in culture that it should. Library, it's way better. So I think Examper, Examper is better than Example. I'd rather say Examper. Uh, the phenomenon holds promise for numerous future example uh, applications. For example, in wireless, see that? That flows. That flows. See, that's why I make these things. That's my, my mind is musical, and it wants to make it musical instead of meaningful, which is terrible. But that's why this is news art. That's why we do what we do. But let's back up. Let's back up. For those of you out there, and I know because some, some of you are my wife, I know you like the linear and you like the just get to the freaking story. All right. This next part is for you. The phenomenon holds promise for numerous future applications. For example, in wireless communication, which trends towards even higher radio frequencies that can transmit far more data than today's conventional channels. The industry is currently rolling out the 5G standard. Components made of a zit Dirac material could... You know what? This is so stupid. I can't believe I did this. Just looking and I realized I am not recording. So I did not start to talk headlines. So guess what? It was one of those times it happens every once in a while. It's a do-over. So you get to hear a new version of this story if you're watching the live stream version. Congratulations, everyone. Congratulations. Well, congratulations me. In three, two, one. These are the talk headlines for Frico Talks the News on Friday, May 22nd, 2020. I am Frico with Frico.com. This is the second uh, version of this story. If you're watching the live stream, you know what I'm talking about. If you're watching the excerpt, well, this is the excerpt that almost never was. And I was probably about six or seven minutes into that one, so that's cool. So we're going to do this again. And our top headline is... Multiplying frequencies with cadmium arsenide. Here's an excerpt from SciTechDaily.com. New material acts as an efficient frequency multiplier, may lead to faster data transfer and more powerful, powerful processors. High frequencies mean faster data transfer and more powerful processors. The formula that has been driving the IT industry for years. Technically, however, it is anything but easy to keep increasing clock rates and radio frequencies. I can tell you, man, I was down here in the basement the other day and I was working on that whole radio frequency up at ease and I, I blew a time hole into my pajamas. And I, well, I can't tell you the rest because this is a family show, but it definitely went blue in some really freaky ways. All right, sorry. Technically, however, it is anything but easy to keep in well I already I, I think I already made that clear I think we all understand you don't mess with the radio frequencies unless you are prepared to go blue in some freaky 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 time warpy kind of ways I don't want to talk about it I was 17 and 35 and 96 and three more ages I can't remember during that whole I can't I can't describe it I don't want to talk about it. huh now you made me think about it. Uh, you know what, studio audience? I give, and I give, and I give, and and this is uh, this is how you pay me back. But that's okay. That's okay. Technically, however, <coughs> moving on, new materials could solve the problem. Experiments at Helmholtz Zentrum Dresden Rosendorf. Sorry, I'm gonna make an except. I'm gonna just. I'm just gonna say. I'm gonna. gonna I'm gonna call them Hasder. Experiments at Hasdar have now produced a promising result. An international team of researchers was able to get a novel material to increase the frequency of terahertz radiation flash by a factor of seven. A factor of seven. A factor. Oh, my gosh. A first step for potential IT applications, as the group reports in the journal Nature Communications. A factor of seven. Hmm. 
Oh, just pondering whether I should consider that for a text enhancement, but no. The experts used a special process to produce ultra-thin, high-purity platelets. Snobs. Snobs. Snoblets. Snoblets. From the cab- cadmium arsenide, which they then subjected to terahertz pulses from the Telby. Telby facility. I love that. That's great. I would work at Telby. I would totally work at Telby. Just, you know, I, if, if, if I could work there, like, even just, like, two hours a week as a janitor just to say that I work at Telby, I would do it. Don't have me cleaning up any torts, t- sort of human... Uh, issues a janitor that doesn't deal with human issues other than that i'm cool we can do this so i could say i work at telby detectors behind the back of the platelet recorded how the cadmium arsenide react to the radiation pulses the result we were able to show that cadmium arsenide acts as a highly effective frequency multiplier and does not lose its efficiency not even under the very strong terahertz pulses that can be generated at telby reports the former hazdar researcher z vang or Z Wang. Uh, no, maybe it's Z. Maybe he says Wang by now. No, I, I am Z Wang. Hello, I am Z Wang. It's nice to meet you. You know, we get it. You know, we get it. You, what? You, we get it. No, we get it. We get it. We get it. Agreement? Oh, okay. Why is your penis up? I'm not complaining. All right. I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> oh, that's terrible. That's terrible. That's, don't, don't go blue, son. Don't go blue. The experiment was the first ever to demonstrate the phenomenon of terahertz frequency multiplication up to the seventh harmonic in this still young class of materials. Still young class of materials. That is fascinating. I love young classes of materials. Never. I just, uh, trust me, I only mean very, in a very limited sense. The phenomenon holds promise for numerous future applications, for example, in wireless communication, which trends towards even ever higher radio frequencies that can transmit far more data than today's conventional channels. The industry is currently rolling out the 5G standard, components made of Dirac materials. Dirac. I just go with Dirac. Screw this. Just components made of Dirac could one day could one day even use even higher frequencies and thus enable even greater bandwidth than 5G. Screw you, 5G! We're already working on your replacement! Dang, that's not cool. Like, 5G is like the, the bride is like... She knows that she's marrying a dude that has been married seven times already. And every time he divorces his wife when she hits the age of 25 and when he marries her she's wherever it's legal in that state just say that she just married the dude and uh, yeah gets a phone call from someone that says hey did you hear about this pageant down in Alabama isn't that where you met your last wife? Yeah. It's like that. It's kind of like that, 5G. It's kind of like that. The new class of materials also seems to be of interest for future computers as direct-based components could, in theory, facilitate higher clock rates than today's silicon-based technologies. So, worth a note. Worth a note, ladies and gentlemen, as we rock it on to the next headline. Now with 10 times faster, thanks to breaking the quantum spin. Yeah, just that's it. I just wanted to make, I want it to be really, really ambiguous. And I wanted to sell it like a product. Now with 10,000 times faster, thanks to breaking the quantum spin. That's how I should have read it. Here's an excerpt from SciTech Daily. Scientists break the link between a quantum material spin and orbital states. The advance opens a path towards a new generation of logic and memory devices that could be 10,000 times faster than today's. Okay. 10,000 times faster. At some point, when does it become... Well, I guess it always becomes relevant when you're talking about 
any any aspect where whoever clicks the switch first, no matter how insignificant the time difference, wins the day. And it, I guess it might still matter, but. In designing electronic devices, scientists look for ways to manipulate and control three basic properties of electrons. Their charge, their spin states, which give rise to magnetism, and the shapes of the fuzzy clouds they form around the nuclei of atoms, which are known as orbitals. Orbitals. Nice. I like orbitals. I like thinking of orbitals. Next to, you know, the whole, I mean, that's, that, that's quite a lovely image, the fuzzy clouds and the orbitals and kind of one floating space. That's nice. I like it. I like it. Until now, electron spins and orbitals were thought to go hand in hand in a class of materials that's the cornerstone of modern information technology. You couldn't quickly change one without changing the other. But a study at the Department of Energy's Slack National Accelerator Laboratory shows that... Did you just trick me? No, I'm, I don't think you did. Shows that a pulse... I was, I was hesitant... Uh, if you if you watch the shows, you know what I'm talking about. I don't like to to uh, say both the full name and the the anagrammatical whatever name. I don't like to do that. I don't like to do it. I, I refuse to participate in that lie. So I think we're safe. But a study at the Department of Energy Slack National Accelerator Laboratory shows that a pulse of laser light can dramatically change the spin state of one important class of materials while leaving its orbital state intact. The results suggest a new path for making a future generation of logic and memory devices based on orbitronics, says Luinga Shen, a Slack research associate and one of the lead researchers for the study. What we're seeing in this system is the complete opposite of what people have seen in the past, Shen said. It raises the possibility that we could control a material spin in orbital states separately and use variations in the shapes of orbitals as the zeros and ones needed to make... Dang. You're gonna... Hold on. This is where you're getting me. I think this is worth pondering here a little bit deeper, folks. It raises the possibility that we could control a material spin in orbital states separately and use variations in the shapes of orbitals as the zeros and ones needed to make computations and store information in computer memories. So if you have variations now, suddenly you're, wow, the granulations of controls and nuances that you could introduce into the computations, I can't even comprehend. Can you? It's like changing over from a language that is based entirely on pictures to one that is based entirely on shapes that represent sounds that you can form into words it's a whole other animal but the difference might even be more pronounced than that the international research team led by Joshua Turner a slack staff scientist and investigator with the Stanford Institute for Materials and Energy Sciences see how I'm going to skip over this thing right here in the par paragraphs there, reported their result this week in Physical Review B Rapid Communications. All right. That, that, that is worth taking note. And uh, as, by the way, I, I do tagging on my, my, my stuff, and I'm going to start to try, I think maybe next week, even for these segments, I'm going to read at least for the the top headlines not all the headlines but I'm going to start reading some of these tags and I have a methodology which is make it easier to find things even for other people maybe to find things if I'm using the words but some of the words I want to make sure that I get repeated are words that I intend on using to investigate deeper to, to find reliable sources and track those sources to other means that I use so that I can add where I find new stuff that's worth tracking I can add new stuff so that I'm sure that uh, as I produce stories for my studio audience I, I get to follow up on stories like this if I feel like hmm, there might be something more to this I better put this in in a notification to track this with some degree of regularity etc etc the quantum leap of vaccine research this is an excerpt from VentureBeat 
Quantum computing will eventually help us discover vaccines in days. The fundamental problem of chemistry is figure out where electrons sit inside a molecule and calculate the total energy of such a configuration. With this data, one could calculate the properties of a molecule and predict its behavior. Accurate calculations of these properties will allow the screening of molecular databases for compounds that exhibit particular functions, such as a drug molecule that is able to attach to the coronavirus spike and attack it. Sorry, coronavirus. Essentially, if we could use a computer to accurately calculate the properties of a molecule and predict its behavior in a given situation, it would speed up the process of identifying a cure and improve its efficiency. It's essentially what I said in other, in other episodes of, of Frico Talks the News. This is being able to create la virtual laboratories where you could go through testing if, as you, as uh, if you will that that would normally take years you can simulate the passage of time and you can actually now what we don't know and I think that what we probably don't know yet is like how much does that actually correlate so I'm sure that what they're hopefully have already been doing is experiments where they begin a physical test and when they begin it they take it through the algorithms and everything else and and they see if the physical test and the algorithms how how much do they match up so i'm sure they're doing tests like that so this is in the nascent stages as far as being i would say reliably predictable they need to have some degrees of more proof than they probably can have uh, but i'm highly highly encouraged and encouraging them to rocket ahead in their in their experimentations as long as they free the IPs that's the thing don't put this behind paywalls free the IPs make it open source let we pours have access to one day being able to build our own personal AI so that we can command the the authority of the universe within us just like anybody else no matter how rich or poor we all have that capacity imagine that world so that's what I'm lobbying for. The exponentially large parameter space of electron configurations and molecules is exactly the space qubits naturally occupy. Is exactly the space qubits naturally occupy. Thus, qubits are much more adapted to the simulation of quantum phenomena. This scaling difference between classical and quantum computation gets very big quickly. For instance, simulating penicillin. A molecule with 41 atoms and many more electrons will require 10 to the power of 86 classical bits or more bits than the number of atoms in the universe. With a quantum computer, you would only need about 286 qubits. This is still far more qubits than we have today, but certainly a more reasonable and achievable number. Dude, if you could simulate the entirety of the universe, like what would it produce? And then, well, you have to go through the, some of these things. Well, if you, there might be ways for you to be able to assume more reliably, even if some things, well, you're not going to know for a thousand years how accurate the thousand year model was. The COVID 19 virus, excuse me, Coronaville. The coronavirus outer spike protein, for comparison, contains many thousands of atoms and is thus completely intractable for classical computation. The size of proteins makes them intractable to classical simulation with any degree of accuracy, even to today's most powerful supercomputers. I want you to take note of that. So just take note of that limitation in our capacity to run coronavirus from the super duper models where we can actually test it out. We can't test it out unless we can fully comprehend all of the contained aspects, meaning all of the atoms in the universe, apparently, or something to that effect. Chemists and pharma companies do simulate molecules with supercomputers, albeit not as large as the proteins, but they must resort to making very rough molecule models that don't capture the details of a full simulation would, leading to large errors in estimation. See, that's, that's what we're... Yeah, that's that's the point here. So they need to be able to. Now, maybe they're not saying that you need to be able to comprehend all the atoms of the universe, but they're saying that 
Okay. Okay, so they're not saying that you have to calculate all the atoms in the universe, but they're saying that the, the, the number is bigger than the number of atoms. In so I want to make that clarification. That's an important clarification to make here. So they're not saying you need to... But even at that, the amount of atoms that you have to comprehend, we still don't have anywhere near the capacity for the... We would need... I get You get it. We all get it. All right. I'm glad I caught that before I left this because sometimes I, I do things like and that's that, that that's what happens when you do these uh, live stream shows and you do these unedited versions that I do you know that sometimes you're going to say something and then afterwards you're like oh I, I, I want I, did, I didn't get that did I, I missed that uh, it's going to happen fortunately I caught that one before I before I hit end record mm, boss me boss me Frico Frico boss chemists and pharma companies do simulate Molecules with supercomputers, albeit, not as large, albeit not as large as proteins, but they must resort to making very rough molecules. Okay, I already read that. That's right. And it might take several decades. Right. It might take several decades, but it might be a lot sooner than you think. I'm banking on it going to be it going to be a lot sooner. I'm going to say within two to three years. That's my prediction. That's, I think, where we will start to see a viable quantum computer can do this type of computing. And with that, we have ended the headlines. We went a l about four minutes beyond what I max want to do, but that's okay. You can get the talk feature coming up next, which is going to be accelerating the development of optimal materials using uh, Mendelavian search. All right, all right, all right. So I'm not going to do the... Uh, Oof, I need a drink. Oh, I need a buddy drink. Man, I can't believe that's uh, that's the first time that's happened in a long time, but that is bound to happen, I know. When I'm recording the segments every once in a while, I will forget to record the segment. Every once in a while, I'll forget to turn the, the microphone thing on. So then I have to, I have to redo, because the important thing is I get them six segments recorded, folks. And you, you got bonus coverage. Of, of the headline segment. So, congratulations. Don't tell anyone. They'll get jealous. That was a sip of... Uh, not out of Hello Kitty, because this is not water. This is Tropicana grapefruit juice. That is my liquid refreshment that I am using today. And with that, let us record the talk feature in three, two, one. This is the talk feature for Frico Talks the News on Friday, May 22nd, 2020. I am Frico with Frico.com and our top and our feature is accelerating the development of optimal materials using Mendelavian search. Mendelavian search could add more accelerant to the development engine across the board by coming up with the optimal of optimal synthesizing of any combination of compounds formed by the elements that anyone could ever imagine. No, no kidding. Literally, literally. I should have written literally there. Darn it. Determine that these particular elements, when synthesized with one another, could create a material or drug, and you can use the Mendelavian search algorithm to do in a matter of moments, relatively speaking, compared to what current methods of optimization development takes, weeks, months, years, years in a matter of moments condensed. This is just another way in which we can, we can... We can put into the power of the... Imagine the average human being that has my dream of my my little AI buddies. And part of that is this is built right into it. We got this... I Man, you know, I was thinking about it. I've been trying to do this thing with this thing over here. And, like, what would happen? Like, are there any t things that we could combine that could create the properties that would allow me to do this? And your little buddies are like, Yo, man, I'm a little bit thinking about that. All right, yo, man. All right, now let's like what kind of legal whatever stuff and dangers or yo, man. AI buddies, and you're not talking to them. It's all thought, but the thought is not words. It's 
you know when you have thoughts that are not words that are just you have whole complex understands it'll be like that that's how you communicate with your ai buddies but it will be completely well arguably there will be arguments that say you know in fact if you're using those if you're using those ai buddies that's the mark of the whatever so i won't even say that because such a cliche if you take the ai buddies into you you are <laughs> you know whatever it could be like that, but I, I don't know. I, I don't. I don't think so. But imagine having that that kind of capacity. That's what that's what we're talking about. These are the types of things that move us towards that possibility. But we want to democratize it. That's the key. The key is to democratize it. Here's an excerpt from Fizz.org. New algorithm predicts optimal materials among all possible compounds. Skill tech researchers have offered a solution to the problem of searching for materials with required properties among all possible combinations of chemical elements. These combinations are virtually endless, and each has an infinite multitude of possible crystal structures. It is not feasible to test them at all and choose the best option. For instance, the hardest compound, either in an experiment or in silico. In silico. Oh, I don't know what that means like in situ or something like that in silico so that means within within whatever this is silicon or silica whatever silico means i could check but i don't want to i want to not know sometimes i like not knowing but you know what you know what it is worth though what's worth changing the scene here and taking this silico see i don't know what it means and i don't want to know it uh, but if i do find out that's fine i wouldn't like run away no don't tell me spoiler alert i'm gonna be like that but we're gonna do this gonna, we're gonna uh, yeah i think we'll put you put you right there there you go silico all right that is beautiful just like the way that looks the computational method developed by Skoltech professor Artem R. Organov and his Ph.D. student Zahed Al-Alayari Al solves this major problem of theoretical material science. I'm going to get this name down right here because I had it, I had it earlier, but I, you know, I keep trying to pronounce this H here for some reason. And this is Alayari. Aliari, that's that's all right. Aliari, I actually like the way that sounds. Aliari. All right. Zah Zahed Zahed Aliari solves this major problem of theoretical material science. Oganov and Aliari presented their methods to the Mend S code, stands for Mendelevian search, and to, in this case, I don't mind repeating both because both of these are cool. So both of these are cool. So I'm fine with it. I will make. Make an exception to the shorties and the longies and repeating them both in the same sentence. I, I will do it in that instance. And tested it on super hard. That is inappropriate. Inappropriate. You should definitely go see the HR uh, department after you've uh, got done submitting this article. Submitting? I, I'm, I'll, I'll be there after you. And tested it on sub super hard and magnetic materials. The researchers first determined that it was possible to build an abstract chemical space so that compounds that would be close to each other in this space would have similar properties. Thus, all materials with peculiar properties, for example, you, you re, you're actually going to re, repeat it. Super hard materials. <laughs> he said super hard. <laughs> it's said super hard will be clustered in certain areas and evolutionary algorithms will be particularly effective for finding the best material. The Mendelevian search algorithm runs through a double evolutionary search for each point in the chemical space. It looks for the best crystal structures and at the same time these found compounds compete against each other, mate, mate, and mutate in a natural selection of the best one. Mate and Oh, and you got super hard, and then you're going to mate. We're all good. Everybody's happy. All right, 
All right, listen. We're doing God's work here. Metaphorically, not literally. We're doing God's work here. All right. We got mate. We got super art. And then you got to add this. Oh, man. Oh, man. That's why. That's why sex before marriage is sin. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I kid. I kid. I kid. But you know what? I think that's a good place to end this. This is going to be a, a short little feature. So there you go. Coming up next is the talk focus, and the top focus is concealed carry gun AI tracking machines converge on future Canada. I never transferred to the features close up, but that's okay. I didn't really care. I'm okay with that. Oh boy. All right, we got our last segment for the break, and that's good. That's good. Fridays, man. Fridays, I am usually, I am usually spentilated. I even considered only doing four shows a week, but in the end, I was like, no, I gotta do, I gotta do. Now, now, Mondays get the shortest show. This is hopefully going to be the second shortest show. Fridays. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna rock it ahead to the talk focus. Let's do this. Let's do this. <clears throat> In three, two, one. This is a talk focus for Frico Talks the News on Friday, May 22nd, 2020. Today's top focus Concealed carry gun AI tracking machine converge. Mac tracking machine. Sorry, not just machine. Canada tracking machines. Multiplicities for you. Converge on future Canada. You know. You know. No big whoop. No big whoop. Well, ladies and gentlemen. It's not the tools, it's the users. In this case, in this case, the tool is so fundamentally anti-Second Amendment, the press release that today's top focus excerpt comes from specifically states there you go. There you go. I just want to. There you go. Maybe I should. I'm not sure. Should I just. Should I just leave it like this little nuclear bomb going off? Or should I. What do you think? Should I just leave it there like that? As I. As I. As I. As I read over my own notes here. Let me just. Where do I want to. Where do I want to put this? How do I want to make this? Because I, I, cause, cause I can mix things up as I want. Because you know. This is. This is news art. It's what you do. All right. Let's shrink this down. There we go. There we go. Well, you know what? We'll just leave it there. I think this is appropriate. All right. All right. Let's 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 do this again. Now we got the now we got the right. You know what? I I think I need that to be a little bit vetiver. I just I just feel like I need this 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 assuages my rage. This helps me get to number twelve as far as days in a row or shows in a row without freaking out. So. Just trust me, this little image here is just keeping me, keeping me. It's like, yeah, look, 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 buddy, here, okay, we get it, we get it, nuclear bomb, get it, get it, get it, get it, all right. All right, here we go, ready, 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 everybody? So are we all ready? Because I'm ready. It's not the tools, it's the users. In this case, the tool is so fundamentally anti-Second Amendment. The press release that today's top focus excerpt comes from specifically states this technology is not for distribution to the U.S. This technology allows the users to go into a space and be able to figure out who has guns. They assure the Canadians, the country in which this is actually allowed, that this is just to attract mass shooters. We are protecting you from death. I have no doubt that this technology will not be used to document who has the guns and where these people are in a land that has just outlawed more than half the guns the current spate of Canadian citizens possesses. None whatsoever. None. They would never do that. Really interesting timing, though. 
Excerpt from Newswire.ca. First Responders Technology Demonstrates Advanced AI Open Carry Weapons Detection Product. I'm, I'm not going to read all this, by the way. I'm just going to be reading probably this part right here, and then we're just going to move on. Okay, because this is all I'm going to be able to do! First Responder Technologies, Inc., First Responder, or the company, a developer of Wi-Fi-based technologies to detect and deter mass shooting and terror attacks involving concealed weapons, is pleased to... Yes, that's exactly... That's, that's exactly... That's the only way this technology can be used. The only way. Is pleased to announce that it is developing an advanced AI open carry weapons detectable camera and successfully demonstrated a proof of concept to the company's board of directors and advisory council at its fiscal Q3 board meeting held on May 15, 2020. The smart AI camera. Why is it called the smart AI camera? Is it... Is it... What else can it do? Clearly, it must be able to do something else, right? It doesn't just detect weapons, does it? It detects everything. It detects all kinds of things. Who's reading the national insert undesirable publication here? Who's wearing the insert undesirable pants here? Yes, it could be pants. It could be pants. It could be pens. It could be vape pens. It could be, it could be a marijuana pin. Who knows? Who knows? Only the smart AI camera knows. Well, the smart AI camera knows nothing. The smart AI camera produces an end result like a machine. At least as we have AI today, I'll say. The individuals that do the programming, that they're not even the programmers. I don't mean the programmers, the coders. I mean the individuals that say what they want, the orders. You know what I want? I'm looking on my menu here of human control devices. I see this thing, this thing, this guy in Mexico is developing this thing. It looks pretty promising. And then another, oh, well, well, this one's from the Ozarks. And oh, yeah, look at this company in Canada. Well, this is interesting. Look at this. Look at this, man. Canada. Look, look, look. You know what's interesting? We could try this product out on a larger population and like pretty overtly so we could really get a lot of good stuff in and then much easier also for us to do it covertly or wherever we want to do it whatever whenever and why ever and all that that'd be great hey let's do that hey you know what we could do we could put these devices in warehouses and employees and stuff don't even know they're there and like tracking and like all all kinds of, we could have the ai's literally pretty much figure out who the employees are that we can trust to make sure that we keep these employees on their heels, bickering amongst themselves so they don't figure out how much we're screwing them. Hey, hey, that's another use. All kinds of uses. All kinds of uses. Yeah, that's fun. But listen, man, listen, listen. It's to stop mass shootings. Everybody's against mass shootings. Oh, yeah. This is definitely... Definitely one of the few technologies that in and of itself I'm not... Well, no, I, I stand corrected. This is a useful technology in a lot of ways. It, it would be really useful, though, if every human being had the capacity to do this with their surroundings and everybody knew it. And then everybody would be like, yo, man, we need to know that you ain't, you ain't, you ain't. And you find out that someone is, as in using their powers to, to figure out the universe at, at, at levels that are... Are just not right. Just invasions of privacies and whatnot. We, I mean, it'd be hard to prove, but I, I think that many people would probably figure out how to get away with it. And you, there would be that. But but I think there'd be plenty of people that would would get caught and and would would have very 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 bad results. Bad results. It would be like that kind of universe. But in their universe, man, none of us even has that choice. It's just done basically without our consent no matter how you want to slice it even the 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 times that they can whip people up to enough of a fear and frenzy that they would literally vote for their own en enslavement yes of course you know that you can whip people up into those frenzies because you've done everything that you can do nutritionally and educationally and in whole other ways to assure that these individuals on the main in overwhelming aggregates lack either and or the capacity the resources the time which is also a measure of resources but uh, to be able to figure out exactly what's going on and so those folks 
we'll just easily keep them in the in the various shrill factional camps in which each camp has elements of 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 authoritarian human control within it but because we fear the particular type of authoritarian human control coming out of one camp we allow for the authoritarian human control coming out of the other camp interesting that no no major camp in america is devoid of of some element of authoritarian control especially authoritarian control control based on moral certaintarian supremacism not in america not right now maybe i don't know if ever but certainly not right now i'm gonna move on from 400 plus to 300 plus million elected officials blockchain is the way i know i put that in a quote but i'm reading it as a fact well a hopeful fact the race to secure the contract that lets congress folks vote Remotely is on as both the U.S. House and U.S. Senate signal various levels of approval of the notion of blockchain remote voting. If this happens, friends, it should be, would be just another logical leap for us to discover we don't need elected officials at all. We can all be representatives voting on a blockchain for the programs we want, but I digress. And the excerpt is from Forbes. Amid coronavirus, will killer app for blockchain be Congress voting remotely? I don't know what happened here when i when i did this i it's a long story but this shouldn't be like this this should be laid out neatly i'm not sure what happened there i blame whoever posted this which was me well not me but a version of me so the version of me that did it that guy you don't trust him i will treat you i'll i'll protect you from him all i need is your wallets on Friday, the House of Representatives passed a resolution to authorize remote voting by proxy during a public health emergency due to coronavirus. Under H.R. 965, the House of Representatives will operate by having members physically present act as proxy to vote for up to absent up to 10 absent members. The rule change allows for House committees to conduct official business such as holding virtual hearings, blah, 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 blah. I'm not going to read all of this. I'm not going to read all this. But now there's going to be a search for this. But listen, the more important stuff is the stuff that I wrote. Okay, the stuff that I wrote here. Okay, this is more important the way it's what they wrote. Okay, right here. Right here, right, right, right here. This is this is where it's at. What this will lead to is us to make the logical leap that we don't need elected officials at all. We can all be representatives voting on a blockchain with the programs we want. So we rally. We rally around a Bill of Rights-based blockchain structure that allows us to essentially vote for the programs that we want, vote for, you know, as long as they're within those Bill of Rights parameters. You can't, no matter how many people want it, if it's a violation of the Bills of Rights, you ain't doing it. So we can blockchain vote. I know for me, I'm going to blockchain vote like ridiculous amounts of let's print all the money we can before this thing blows up and let's put it all into the blights of our lands, especially our ghettos. And let's let's give these ghettos, these blights in general, these areas where we've had this generational poverty amongst significant groups of people. And we... Even amongst those groups, what you're going to find amongst the poorest of the poorest groups, you're still going to find the entrepreneurs, the uh, the activists, the doers, not just and but I don't just want entrepreneurs like I want entrepreneurs, activists, doers, find the people that are doing stuff, find the people that are acting and when they're doing it to the degree that you could figure this out which you're not going to be perfect, but you want to get as close to figuring that you want as many people that you select to give money to, to be people that act fundamentally in consensual manner with the people around them. And they're building some sort of consensual enterprise. This is, that isn't based on, we will destroy and get anybody that's doing destroy and get don't fund them. The people that are building stuff that are, that are making communities right here. And now give those people the money the, the, that they don't have to pay back and you turn this country into something phenomenally awesomely awesome the united states is the greatest country in the world no matter what right now so long as we stay a nation if we can find our national nationalism our nationalism is the bill of rights and it it is it has no color it has no 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 assumption it has no assumption about an individual outside of are you honoring the bills of rights of others 
And the, the one lesson that I think that we've all learned is it's not the Bill of Rights just for government. It's the Bills of Rights for how we commerce with commerce amongst ourselves. So it's about the commerce and the government. It's about the corpo state also being held to the Bills of Rights standards. It's, it's not allowing governments what they have now in America. They have a loophole. The corporation and the state are so one that the state can use the corporations to control the public in America in ways that the, the corpor- that the state never could. They can violate your bills of rights using corporations that are, they're all kind of, they're all in one incestuous family. And you take something like this, well, the power that they have is their ability to have regulators writing the, these laws that all come from the same families, literally the same families, with some very few exceptions. You always have a new person now and again, the nouveau riche, so to speak, but on the main. These regulators, they're all coming from the same families, and they all serve the same families. It's all, it's its the corpo states that are writing the regulations because they have access to the few people that have the power to write the laws, which are the frameworks for them to write the regulations a really broadly written framework so they got a lot of play and they can change things as they need them on the fly it's designed to work that way it's this literally the wilson model of progressivism that literally is how america works today and this would end that because if you don't have the ability to just go to 400 and some pay off and Ch- china loves our system because it's so easy to try to pay off 400 human beings whose whose lives and scale could be fundamentally changed with millions of dollars coming their way through through china i wouldn't be directly it would be through companies that their families are connected to that have business in china and and and, and or 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 the investment companies that they have that will buy stocks and this and that and they'll know in advance china's approvals to get access to markets and all that all that kind of stuff that's the way that they buy off politicians in america that's the way they buy off corporations in america china's not the only one and and america and americans have been doing this to others as well too so it's not i'm, I'm not isolating on china but uh, something like this would totally gut that because now china can't pay off other foreign powers can't pay off other competing international corporations that maybe don't have a vested interest in american being in any kind of sense a powerful nation they don't have the ability to pay off 300 and some million human beings who are part of the consensus building process of making policy at the national level in america and it's possible it's possible we can do it we could do away with presidents altogether we can have presidential councils comprised of of maybe i don't know two three thousand people a presidential council replaces a president yeah we can have stuff like that we and we can have uh, s- situations where we have sometimes for individuals that we will select to serve during periods of emergency or whatever where you need individuals to make quick decisions there's ways to to balance all those needs out as well we can have an american republic that is truly a direct democracy american republican confederal union you know an american republican confederal union american republican direct democracy confederal union all of that all of that one place no elected officials we could we could do that at any rate i'm going to end it there we've reached the halfway point of the show coming up next is the news poem and our news poem for today is rearranging 15 trillion atomic poeticals yeah i know i didn't switch to the focus uh, close up but i'm okay with that listen folks i'm gonna go take my break making pretty decent time here not as good as i wanted to i actually wanted this show to be a lot shorter i want it to be maybe an hour and a half long but it's probably not going to be an hour and a half but that is what it is we are past the halfway point pretty good chance i'm going to be able to put in not 11 i'll be able to put 12 up there we'll get a 12 spot hang a 12 spot on up up there that's what we're heading towards ladies and gentlemen so 
I'll be back in a few. I do my eating out regarding the whole liquidation thing, and uh, I'll be right back at you. Keep watching. back ladies and gentlemen i'm back from uh almost didn't make it back <clears throat> but i uh i tangled with the toils of the phlegm phlegmographies that come from the acid refluxes and i conquered it so to speak after a uh, a, a a vociferous uh, encounter with a previous uh, meal that i had digested i'll leave it at that <clears throat> but i'm here <clears throat> I am here. Now, even with that in mind, I do want to say, though, that my acid reflux is getting better. And I know it seems weird, but the grapefruit, yeah, it helps me. It does. Thanks for your concern. Thanks for writing it. All right. P.O. Box. <laughs> I don't have a P.O. Box. I couldn't afford a P.O. Box, ladies and gentlemen. I'm poor. I'm a po' boy. That's why I'm doing this show. This is like, this is literally my way of, what do you call this? Uh, oh, man, what is it called when you go out there and you <coughs> you sing for your 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 monies? What do you call that? Oh, I can't remember what it's called. Uh, bu bus Busing or, oh, man, I can't get it in my head. I can't get it. Well, anyway, I'm not doing that. I'm not doing that, 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 that busing or, or whatever it's called. I'm not doing that. <coughs> I'm coming back to the show. I have the let's let's see what I have left here. I have the news poem. The news poem is rearranging fifteen trillion atomic poeticals. 
And then I have the dialectical <clears throat> vaccine nationalism in you. I think I'm going to get through these. Well, I'm certainly going to get through this first one without uh, in danger of, 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 of hitting into the, uh, the, the freakouts. But the second one, there may be some issue in the scale of things with what I went through this week. Yeah. And in general, this this show, the Friday show, is, is the one that I want to make sure there are certain technological, scientific stuff that I get to that I tend to. I can only put so much in general. I try to mix things up. But on this show, like, yeah, any of those things that I miss throughout the week, I'm going to make sure I cover those. Get them out there. <coughs> the ones that I think are important enough to take note of for various reasons. So I think in general, a Friday show probably maybe the easiest show for me to do in terms of getting through that freak out. I'm thinking. I'm thinking. We'll see as it, as it plays out. But with that in mind, here's this. Warning, the material you're about to be exposed to is for the minds of individuals who are limited in their capacity to understand the actual reality of power around them just as you and everyone else in life on your What you're about to hear are opinions, suppositions like gospel or scientific proofs, not infallible certainties. Brace yourself for incoming opinions that could confirm or deny your preferential view of the reality of power. Brace yourself for fallible material, fallible opinions, and values reflected, but nonetheless variably firm and real. We do not apologize for doing that, we do not apologize for daring to express our views and impressions of what we believe is and what we hope to see. We will keep talking so long as we are able. And now, Frico attempts to talk about the news without freaking out. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that is the plan. I have made note of it, <clears throat> and I am cognizant of the fact that uh, I am <clears throat> nearing the end of completing 12 shows and really going a full week. A full week, ladies and gentlemen. That is what we're dealing with. So, with that in mind, let's get ready to record. Let's just get, let's just, let's just, just, just get right to it. I moisten because I care. I moisten because I care. That's right. Let's get this news poem recorded here. Oh, let me get back to here. That's Warning right. <coughs> but I don't want to play that again. <coughs> That's right. This is how I want to do the news poem. All right, ready? This is the news poem for Frico Talks the News on Friday, May 22nd, 2020. My name is Frico with Frico.com. Our news poem today is titled, Brace Yourselves, Ladies and Gentlemen, for Rearranging 15 Trillion Atomic Poeticals. News first poem follows. This is an excerpt from UPI.com. Physicists observe quantum entanglement of 15 trillion atoms. Scientists have observed an unexpectedly large quantum system featuring 15 trillion entangled atoms, according to a new study. For the new study, published Friday in Nature Communications, Researchers heated a cloud of gas atoms to temperatures upwards of 450 kelvins. The atoms were far from isolated. Every few microseconds, billions of gas atoms would collide, causing their electrons to spin sporadically in different directions. Physicists used a laser, laser to measure the magnetization of a hot and chaotic cloud of gas atoms. By measuring magnetization, caused by electron spin patterns, scientists were able to detect coupling between the gas atoms. Scientists were surprised to detect entanglement of some 15 trillion atoms. Now here's, here's the mind-boggling part, in case you don't have a reference, which I don't either. 
a total of 100 times greater than the previous entanglement record. And this is study author Jir Kong. If we stop the measurement, the entanglement remains for about one millisecond, which means that 1,000 times per second, a new batch of 15 trillion atoms is being entangled. Mm -hmm. Whew. Wow. Oh, I should give a shout out to where there, where Jia Kong is from. It's the Institute of Botanic Sciences. This result is surprising. A real departure from what everyone expects of entanglement, says co-author Morgan Mitchell, professor at IFCO. We hope that this kind of giant entangled state will lead to better sense of performance and applications ranging from brain imaging to self-driving cars to searches for dark matter. Again, though, it's a matter of being able to process a gazillions of gazillions oh speaking gazillions gillian gazillionaires go to freako.com slash tips and uh leave me a gazillion dollars no questions asked and you'll feel good about yourself for a day and, and tomorrow you should feel like a human cesspit once again and find another person like me and give them a gazillion dollars too and just keep doing that until you have no more gazillions and then you know just enough for you to have your own personal little secure kingdom sure but uh, outside of that just rico.com slash tip i will help you feel good for a day <coughs> so physicists use a laser to measure the magnetization of the hot and chaotic cloud of gas atoms by measuring magnetization caused by electron spin patterns scientists were able to detect coupling between the gas atoms that's 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 15 trillion atoms they used a laser to measure the magnetization of the hot and chaotic cloud. It's so beautiful. Like this, by the way, this was, um, I read this a few times for purpose, on purpose, because this was the sentence that said, yep, <coughs> that's my news poem. Now, this truly is a news poem in the sense of, of, of if you're going to talk about, if, if, an, if a news poem is a genre and has a form, the genre, the form would be, that you take a news item and then you take different phrases and some of them you might want to take maybe literal but some of them you try to get uh, try to get cut off at interesting s s s sections okay that cloud of or something and then you assemble them kind of at random maybe you have some degree of sense of where you want to put things and then you go through and then you just kind of write around it. You you fill it out. <coughs> like that is... And I like to do these every once in a while. I think this is the only one I've done this this week like this. I think last week I did two. This I'd like to do at least one. So hey, Friday, man, last day. So I chose this. Let me... Let me switch over into something a little bit more... Comfortable. Do I want to put it here? Let me see. Let me see, do I want to put it here? Hmm, let me think. I don't know. I think, I think we're going to put it here. I think we're going to put it here. I think this is where we're going to put it. All right. But we're going to put on, there we go. We're going to use that music for it. Are you guys ready now? Rearranging 15 Trillion Atomic Poeticals. Brain imaging to self. Atoms would collide, derived, spilled out of the soup can, the coarse entanglement record. Giant entangled, cornered. Physicists used a laser, star resources, applications ranging, ranging from brain. Gas atoms range across space, far from isolated. Microseconds, billions of gas shutters, performance and applications, <coughs> words, tangles, chaotic cloud of sensor performance, atoms would collide 
elevate the sense, breathe, electron spin pattern suffered the light of the day as virology vapors in the ripples, applications ranging. Photonic sciences ponder the unknowns. The quantum system S detect S entanglement. Measure the magnetization where atoms would collide. And there you go. <coughs> That's it, folks. That'd be the news poem. Be sure you go to Freako.com. Just go to Freako.com. Just bookmark it, save it, whatever. Make sure you go there every day in the morning and the evening because usually if you go morning, evening, you're going to see significant enough changes to, to warrant a big old scroll. You could scroll through the whole length and breadth of this site. I got so much stuff here for you to go through and ponder and matriculate. This is like, this is like a Facebook scroll. Except it's like good. I mean, subjectively speaking, of course, I am the greatest podcaster of all time in the in the becoming. Not there yet. I'm humble, but I'm so so. You know, you're getting quality. Of course, you're. Of course, you're getting a quality scroll. That's what you get. You get a quality scroll on the Frico. So just just bookmark Frico.com and and then you'll find opportunities to do other things and then time you'll do other things because of course you will because you love me i love you you love me it's a beautiful relationship coming up next <coughs> last segment is the dialectical in our got a short dialectical coming up for you and our dialectical is vaccine nationalism and you oh boy oh boy getting ready for the last segment now and this is going to be a short segment I don't really have a lot to say about this. And I think I'll, the dialecticals on Fridays will often probably be pretty short. <clears throat> That's the way it'll probably play out, with some exceptions. I just wanted to make sure that, that you took note of this. Just a little, this is just a little commentary. With I probably won't go too deep. We'll see how it goes. And we're going to start in three, two, one. This is the dialectical for Frico Talks the News on Friday, May 22nd, 2020. My name is Frico with Frico.com, and our dialectical today is Vaccine Nationalism and You. That's right, folks. There's a thing called vaccine nationalism, a nationalizing of the quest for the vaccine and the exclusivizing of that resource for the pride of the nation first and foremost. There's an undercurrent to this, though, that goes beyond the mere vaccination nationalism narrative. There's an effort here by the NBC oppos to cultivate and plant seeds of an ever-emerging narrative wrapped around couching every effort by every nation to be self-sustaining and self-secure as being a guise for nationalism which is anti-global and global is f better for figuring out how to make a perfect world for all the best people this is the underlying theme that these uh, nbc in this case the nbc oppo types are are pushing and it's not because they believe it it's just because that's these are what the paymasters this is the narrative. This is the vehicle of power that perpetuate all the family members that, that you love and that you know. All the all the homes where you hope to be welcome into as you write your little NBC News article. I, you don't really, you're not, not that you're thinking of it in those terms. You're just thinking of it in terms of. This is the job. This is the narrative. I know what I'm doing. I'm doing the narrative. And if I do the narrative, I advance and I get further and I advance and I get more stuff of whatever I want, which I won't get if I'm not invited into those homes. A little friggin' vassal. A little vassal wrote this. 
I'm not going to say the vassal's name because leave the vassal alone. The vassal is still most likely one of us. And if the vassal ever realized that, the vassal would end their vassalage and be with us, the force. Especially if the vassal realized that there is a way, there are ways in which we, the poors, can, well, right here and now, <clears throat> we can do amongst ourselves. I'll have more to say about that as time goes on, but. Waves of vaccine nationalism hinders global efforts to halt coronavirus. This competitive vision outlined in the United States and other vaccine-producing powerhouses such as China and India threatens to undermine the efforts of dozens of countries, which are raising billions of dollars in an attempt to find an effective immunizing shot that they should be available equally around the world. Why? You don't understand. That's not true. This is not true. It should not be available equally around the world. Unless you're willing to walk away from the nation-state model or the coercive enterprise governance model, actually more, more completely. If you're willing to do that, then we can talk. And until you're willing to do that, you cannot ask these nation-states not to do the very thing that you're telling them not to do. Absolutely the right thing is for any nation-state to assure that their people get first. Now, they want to be magnanimous. They want that. They get all kinds of points for that, all kinds of uh, powers for that. So to be sure, they want to develop the, the vaccine first. They want to take care of their people first and foremost. They're not going to be giving anything out to anyone unless and until their people are taken care of first. Of course. Of course they're going to do that. They have to do that. That is the reality of power. The idiot that's writing this, the the vac the 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 the, the, the vassal of note, whoever is writing this doesn't really understand the reality of power or maybe does understand the reality of power. I'm not sure whether you're a willing just content marketer and you know you know what's what or or whether you actually believe this will. You actually want to you want to you want to hold people to a moral standard that's based upon a world that you don't want to exist. And the world that you don't want to exist is a consensual world in which we don't have the power to thug our way into other people's lives using whatever moral constructs we've come up with in this particular century or even decade. At the, who knows? You know, we'll get to the point now where you know maybe, maybe ten years from now, it's so rapid we got we got new moral constructs rising and falling within a year or two. It could be that. It could be that. If we think that uh, the the age of the SJW authoritarian might be short. And it probably will be cons com compared to other ages that it kind of replaced. Well, maybe you ain't seen nothing yet. <laughs> maybe it's going to be a lot mercurial, more mercurial than that. Who knows? Who knows? But this person's living in a la-la land in which they don't understand that nation states are literally competing in, in life or death struggles to, to basically enable their particular citadelian classes more power to poop over others than the other citadelian classes have that's what this is fundamentally about and this is totally outside of that of that reality this is in that magic frou-frou world where they hold people to standards that that assume that 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 no one else but america which is its target fundamentally nbc's target NBC is basically doing the work of China. Make sure America never gets rallied around itself. Keep it divided. Keep it condemning itself. This is this is what this is. This is fundamentally what this is. This is Chinese propaganda. I'm not saying that the person that, that whatever vassal wrote this that understands that this is Chinese propaganda, but it's Chinese propaganda not because the Chinese wrote it, but because the Citadelians that happen to own NBC and it's 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 larger what are they what, what I don't even know the name of the grand entity that they're I forget whatever what is it I want to say Metro MG I don't even know what the heck they are anymore Comcast or something uh, whatever whatever conglomo they're on that conglomos the 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 ones that have the the, pre, the prevailing amount of power within that structure the Citadelian families built into those structures, they have a vested interest in the United States of America not cutting off America's access to those Chinese markets, even if it means doing a deal with the quote-unquote devil. 
And in this case, it's Chairman Z. Chairman Z is a fascist. He is a diehard Chinese nationalist fascist, and they are submitting to his standards for the sake of perpetuating their Citadelian family power. That's all you have here. That's the simple nuts and bolts reality of the situation. I mean, as I see it, I could be completely wrong, but I really, I really, I highly doubt that I will. And I, at this point, because, yeah, because this, this is a thread that I've been following for a while, for about 15 years, that has been following more or less the path that I thought it would. So at this point, I'm, I'm very convinced, not, not fully, but very convinced that, that, that I'm absolutely right in these assumptions, no matter how insane they may sound, that this is, this is fundamentally what this is about. This is fundamentally where this article is, is coming from. And this individual that wrote this article, uh, whether this individual was just a, 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 a for, for other various reasons, they find this vehicle of power useful to them and they reflect this without being told to. And that, that's ideally what you want to do. What you want to do when you're spreading propaganda is find people that naturally believe the things that you want others to believe. So whether this is that person or this person is a content marketer or whatever they are, they're, they're living, they're living in, in a la-la land, uh, a, a fairy tale universe that just doesn't exist. And, and God help them if they actually believe this. That anybody, that any nation state should do anything but make sure that they get the cure first and that they take care of their people first. And I tell you this, anyone that tells you that a nation state shouldn't do that is basically telling you that you shouldn't have nation states. And I'm okay with that. That's great. But the people telling you that, they don't want to get rid of the state. Now, they want the state to be much larger. Maybe they want it to be as, as, as close to world state as they can make it, but... But they don't want to get rid of the coercive enterprise governance model at all. If anything, they want to increase the power of coercive enterprise governance models. They want to go back in time. They want to go back to the frickin' Spartans. That level, that level of government power where the government decides who lives and dies from cradle to grave. That's what they want. They want to be able to fully control the evolution of human on the terms that they deem are in fact, human. That's what they want. Some experts and former officials fear that leaders such as President Donald Trump may pers be pursuing the doctrine of vaccine nationalism. It's just insane. This is the idea that any government whose scientists about win this vaccine race, as it's often described, might be trying to hoard the shots for domestic use. Of course they're going to. They have to. And as soon as they take care of theirs, then they will they will it will be in their best interest to as quickly as possible produce enough for everyone. And the United States probably has the capacity to do that pretty quickly once they figure out whatever it is. So I'm not even this is such a non issue even as it is, but it's it's just another way to inject that little seed. All all national interest is bad. No. The only way that's true is if, if there are no such things as other nation states. They're telling the United States of America to unilaterally disarm while they're not telling other nation states to do the same. That should trouble you. When your own leaders, when, you're, when, when, when the most powerful corporations in the universe are regularly putting out this message for America to unilaterally disarm while not calling on other nation states to do the same, while they praise China, you should look at that as a foreign power amongst you that is not working in your best interest it is not looking out for the on the ground reality of average americans it is looking out for the interest of citadelians that look at their bottom lines and they see if we don't have china we don't continue to even come close to the amount of money that we've been making and you people don't understand how much of the garbage that you see today is garbage because it's subsidized by Chinese profits. They don't have to worry about producing what Americans want in their comic books, for instance, when they're making gazillions in China. China enables them to treat Americans like lab rats. 
we will create the human. They have more power over our lives as Chinese vassals than they do as free Americans. Do you understand now? They have more power. The, the Citadelians of America have more power over our lives as Americans if they are Chinese vassals than they do if they are free Americans. And, and that's the reality of power. And this is not, this is, China as a nation state has done nothing wrong. And America, all nation states in various ways throughout history, all kingdoms, all empires, all city states, all of them, to the degrees to which they are able to do so, they have always sought to influence the narratives of their competitors in ways that benefited them. And that's all that China's done. China has done nothing wrong. China is innocent. China is a badass motherfucker. China is, is king fucking tuna. As far as nation statism is concerned, Chairman Z is the boss, is the fucking man. He put China for, he did what a nation state says it's supposed to do. Look out for its people. That's why nation states exist, because they're going to make your life better. That's why they exist. And in return, you make the nation, you've sacrificed your life for the greatness of the nation state, but the nation state makes your life better. That's the idea. I mean, that's totally bullshit, but that's the idea. And Chairman Z, in all kinds of uh, surface ways that he can easily translate to the myth that he's actually accomplishing this, he's got all the keys. As far as his people are concerned, we here in America, all of our leaders, all of our most important leaders across all spheres, all of our major social media platforms, our, our, our super highways that we occupy, all of these things, all of them keep sending messages. America must, you know, America must stop thinking of America. I don't like the America first phrase. I'm not going to use that. But America, any, any, and it's not just uh, combating America first. It's anything. Why? Why do you, why is it that in America, America's leaders are consistently sending messages, sending, uh, enforcing moral constructs in, in fundamental violation of our Bill of Rights standards? They're anti American. They're a fundamentally anti-American violations. And I tell you, do not make the mistake that SJWs are anti-Bill of Rights. SJWs are, well, I, I won't speak for SJWs. I don't know a whole lot, but I know a fair amount. I, well, I know a fair amount. Yeah. Uh, but there, there, are, there are significant numbers of SJWs, despite all, they have very, a lot of us, they, they agree with a lot of what authoritarian SJWs believe. They believe uh, America really is fundamentally a racist nation. But yet they still believe in operating within the parameters of the Bill of Rights. Plenty, plenty of SJWs that, that they have their beliefs, but they believe in whatever, however they appeal to authority, it's all framed within the Bill of Rights. There's plenty of SJWs that are seriously thinking of abandoning SJWism altogether just because of how much it's tied to this anti-Bill of Rights narrative. This is a Chinese narrative more than it's American. It's not literally Chinese. I'm just being figurative. But it's certainly more of a, it's, it's, it's certainly much more in keeping with Chinese philosophy in general, Chinese authoritarian philosophy oh, i won't get down i won't get down that road because i'd be on forever anyway i think i i think i won't i won't I will, i'll just i'll just end it at that i'll just end it at that because there's so much more i can say and i'll have a lot more to say china is a big focus but remember I, I, don't get me wrong chairman z does not get a pass that guy can can eat a bag of proverbials if you know what i'm saying he can go get himself he, he's, a, he's a killer. He's a vicious, psychotic killer, but most nation state leaders are, including Donald Trump. He's a psychotic killer, too. He's, a, he's, he's new to the game, though, so I think he's still 
seems like a man at some level still still a measure of a, a shock about the whole brutality of the situation. That's my sense about the guy. But in the end, he signed up for the job and he did the job. And now that he's done the job, he's one of them too. He's a killer. They're all killers. So anyway, Chairman Z can eat a bag of this, But China, uh, the nation state as a whole, if you consider it within the nation state parameters, They've done nothing wrong. No American. We have no, if anybody, this is, this is what I don't want to see and I don't want to cultivate. This is, our wrath should be at our American leaders, not at China or the Chinese. Chinese Americans are awesome to have in our world. What makes us the greatest nation of the world is that we have Chinese Americans and Nigerian Americans and we have, uh, Zimbabweans, we have uh, Canadian Americans, whatever. Yes, Canadian Americans. We have we have the world. That's what, and I keep saying this: America is the world. That's why. That, why is America the greatest country in the world? The only reason is because we are the world. Literally, we are the world. So, so we need all our folks, and we can't be we can't be going into the whole. Let's blame China. China did nothing wrong. The Chinese did nothing wrong. They did what any nation state would do if it had the opportunity to do so, including the United States of America, who's done this to other nation states and far worse, who has assassinated leaders to 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 bend the nation state to fit its vehicle of power usefulness. Yeah. In the name of fighting communism or whatever whatever it was using at the time. Uh, so America doesn't, we don't get a pass. We are sinners. We've done what China has done and China doesn't get condemned. The only people that get condemned are the Americans because they're the ones that made it possible. China didn't come in here and just overwhelm us with awe and wonder and awesome. They came in here with grift and our Americans said, oh, heck yes. Oh, we went in on this. Screw this stuff, man. Yeah, let's just live in the temporal and the here and now and enjoy the mm, 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 sucky, sucky, sucky. It's a sucky, sucky culture now. And our even our citadelians are now fully immersed in the sucky, sucky culture. That's primarily what China enabled them to embrace the sucky, sucky culture. You know, you just suck anything you want. And just, mm, 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 just pleasure, 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 instant, instant, all that. The citadelians are now living those lives. And they're kind of they're they're able to because they've uh, created this place where they they don't have to keep fighting for what they got. They got a nice they got they got nice little bubbles of protection around them at this point. And thanks large part to not having to worry about American audiences anymore. The 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 the, the, mo the moral constraints of uh, the moral reprehensions of the American audience. They don't have to worry about it anymore, and they can just give give voice and give strength to whatever particular group of people are pitching the type of uh, narratives that they could put their vehicles of power into. So SJW authoritarianism. But don't get me wrong. These folks aren't stupid. They got their fingers in all kinds of pies. It just so happens right now maybe SJW authoritarianism is one of the more useful vehicles of power it gave fruit, but they put their fingers in every pie. Anything that starts to rise, they immediately put their finger in that pie. Anti-father's fingers in that. Uh, I was there. I was part, I was one of the original members of the of the 2010-ish iteration of the Tea Party movement. There was a 2007 m m movement and it was from a more left group, so they weren't the we weren't connected to them. We didn't even know. I didn't know they existed until years later. I thought we were the ones who revived it, and most everybody did for a while. But we did, and it was two thousand seven. They did it first. Uh, well, there's been other groups, but I mean, as far as getting any kind of prevailing attention, any national attention, they did. So I was part of this, and I and I saw the Tea Party movement, and I watched it become coerced and perverted and colluded. It's one of the reasons, in part, why I'm not a conservative. When I see the conservatives act just like the all the things that I... And I was an idealist Democrat who found out Democrats lied, and so I ran the conservatives, and then I was like, wait, conservatives lie too. Oh, oh, I get it. They're all liars. Well, we are all liars. That's what I really came to understand. We, and I still am, we all are. So uh, once I came to that realization, Democrats, Republicans, I was like, oh. 
So, 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 so that's where we're at. We're, 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 we're at this point now where we have these groups of people that somehow imagine that these, one or the other group is, is not as much of a lying piece of authoritarian, fascistic type, uh, moral supremacist jerk water that they are. And then it realized that they are too. And I think it's frustrating because I think that, uh, that if the 80, that the 80 plus percent of this country, that if we really, uh, if we were able to talk outside of these parameters that we keep insisting that we hold on to, we would find that we actually have way more in common with the, us than we do maybe the rest of the country to such a degree that there's there's a party here. There's a party. Maybe call it the Action Batsa Party. Yeah. Action Batsa Party. Yeah. Something like that. The action base, base of action. This is the party that well we pledges we will we will we will operate on the base of action that takes us towards consensual exchange across all humans. That's that's the goal. That's the essential goal. And how do we do that base of action? We do that. Well, fundamentally, we do it by building and creating our own stuff right around us here. And now we create our own encrypted networks, our own mesh networks, our own 3D printing networks, our own. Uh, there are already places that have these places called maker labs where they have these 3D printers set up and people can come in at various times and use the 3D printers and they're they got to do things to help maintain it and everything. So there's opportunities. There's so many opportunities with the tech right here and now. The auction parts of so the, the, the one thing about the auction bots of party is it doesn't it's non voting party. We don't vote. We don't vote. We don't run for office. The auction bots of party. The only thing that we do is we help people build. We help them build mesh networks. We help them build uh, uh, micro factory associations. We, we we help them spread 3D gun printing machines to people. We, we, we help them network to be able to provide their own in-house medical care for one another. If they get to the degree to which they're capable and they find people. Well, there's 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 so many ways now with the technologies that we have and even before these technologies, even other capacities that we've had since we've been human between those things we have the capacity in here and now to to build a world in which consensuality is the underlying reality of power and when that is the case then we'll find out a lot more about who human beings really are in aggregates once we remove the paths that have enabled through the millennia the the psychopaths to continue to be the primary drivers of the vehicles of power our religions our philosophies our laws all of it our our, our movies that these have been primarily the ones who have been the drivers of those vehicles of power vehicles designed not ever to serve us but to continue to either to expand and protect their own personal territories that's it it's all of human history, and we have the capacity to break the cycle, and the Action Batsa Party will do it. I'm not formally announcing the creation of the Action Batsa Party. I just, somehow I went on this tangent, and that's where I ended. So I don't know if I'll think about it again, or if it's just an idea that'll float and die the day that it was ushered. Action Batsa Party, the non voting party, the party of action, not politics. I like it. All righty. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, I think that it is time. It is time to consider pondering off into the universe. Frico talks the news. Will we have a political party, a non-political political party? A party of action, which means no politics. Will we have that party? Anybody want to help me form the Action Batsa Party? The Action Batsa Party. I mean, it's something. It's something. You have 
Maybe we can have all the trappings of political parties. We can have conventions. We can vote for crap. And But fundamentally, we're a party of doing. We're a party of building. Help people build. They say the word co-ops. I don't like those that word. Um, try to convince them. Don't say co-ops. How do I convince you co-op people to start to say consensual associations? Or consensuals. Just call them consensuals. Oh, I work at a consensual. What's a consensual? Well, a consensual is an association of individuals who have various levels of uh, stewardship within uh, a company that has uh, governance standards that are consensually based. Oh, that's what a consensual is. Yeah. I'd like to see consensuals. Now, it's hard to find consensuals because humanity for so many millennia has worked so hard to create non-stewarding individuals. Individuals who lack stewardship, even even approaching stewardship of their own thoughts. But that's another matter altogether. Anyway, I'm going to punch this puppy in the head. Not literally. I would never literally put a punch puppy in the head. But I'm going to punch this puppy in the head. Make it happen. And I'm going to do something for you. My loyal audience of, of tens, of, of, of less than tens, of ones, of one. My loyal one. The one listening right now. Wherever you are, if there's one person that's hanging out right now and you're looking to see, watching one, and you're that one, and you've been watching for a while, first off, God bless you. Get therapy. But after that, I do this for you, friend. Whoever and whatever you are, even if you hate me, even here about ready to write a comment that says, dude, seriously, you're a moron. Even if you even if you are gonna write that comment, make sure you add on to this that you noted that I, I changed this for you. Twelve. Twelve shows without a freak out, ladies and gentlemen. A full week with no freak outage whatsoever. A second full week in a row. Ladies and gentlemen, Frico is back. Frico is back. The streak is back. We're going to break it, ladies and gentlemen, with your help. It has been a challenging week, but I made it through. And now, ladies and gentlemen, 